Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest. Breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, on you, Husky. <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. As a parent, would you fail your own child? You may be doing just that by ignoring the serious problems that our schools face today. Overcrowding to the point where students must share desks and books, attend only half-day sessions, not enough teachers. With the school population growing by a million every year, what will a situation be in ten years? Realizing that these educational problems must be solved, President Eisenhower has called for a White House conference on education to be held in November. As a citizen, as a parent, it's up to you to join your community's efforts toward better schools. Start today by writing for free information on how to hold a community conference. Write Better Schools, 2 West 45th Street, New York 36, New York. Remember, better schools build better communities. This message is brought to you as a public service. Corporal Bill Buckland of the Northwest Mounted Police traveled on snowshoes through desolate country miles from the settlement of Bellary Flats. The corporal was on the trail of Cub West and the five killers traveling with him. Buckland was closer than he realized to the man he saw. Here he comes. Get ready. All right. Buckland didn't know that they had doubled back in their tracks and were watching his approach from behind a formation of boulders. And then, when he was within rifle range... <coughs> That got him, boys. That Mountie's off our tracks for keep. We'll make sure of that. Well, let's shove on, boss. We'll shove on after I make sure the Mountie's dead. Come on, we'll go over and take a look at it. Right, right. The short, heavy-set man giving the orders was Cub West. Cub had received his nickname early in his career of crime. In his teens, he had turned criminal. And his greatest boast was that he'd been behind bars only once. And now, in his middle thirties, he was an expert at dodging justice. Only one of his followers, a man named Tex, had escaped being pictured on handbills. When Cub saw the face of the Mountie he had shot, he turned to Tex and snapped. That's said Preston was on our trail. Well, boss, that's what I heard in Dawson. Oh, this isn't Preston. Who is he, Cub? His name's Buckland. He generally patrols this territory. Gosh, boss, I didn't know. I thought he was Preston. Well, we didn't get Preston, but this Mountie sure is dead. As I see it, we're in worse trouble than we were before. We killed one Mountie, and we still have Preston to reckon with. Hey, Cub, let's make for the border while we have the chance. I'm not clearing out of the Yukon till I have enough gold to put me on easy street. Uh, Cub, if we stay here, we'll be captured. Yeah. Yeah. Not if we make Preston think we cleared out of this country. You mean we'll make him think we've cleared out? But we'll stay here? That's it. We'll hide out till the heat dies down. You know a safe place to hide? Yeah. There's no mine not far from here. About two years ago, a gent named Wright bought it. He and his wife and son live there. Yeah, well, what about it? Well, I heard in Goldville that Wright died. The woman and the ten-year-old boy are there alone. We'll make them hide us. I get set to travel, boys. We're heading for the right mine. Nearly an hour after Buckland had been shot, Yukon King led Sergeant Preston and the Mounties' team of huskies toward Bellary Flats. The sergeant was accompanied by a young American named Ed Wright. 
Sergeant, how far from the flats are we? I don't know, Ed. I've never been in this part of the country. How do you know we're going in the right direction? According to my information, this trail should take us to your brother's place. I'll be mighty glad to get there. I'm anxious to see young Johnny. It was only four when his dad brought him to the Yukon. How old is he now? Nearly ten. Poor little kid. It's tough for a boy his age to lose his dad. What happened to his father? He died about three months ago. Pneumonia. Oh, sorry to hear that. I promised my brother I'd take care of his wife and son if anything happened to him. But from now on, I guess it's up to me. Hey, Sergeant, is it my imagination or is the sky getting dark over to the north? It isn't imagination, Ed. We're going to have snow. What if the trail's covered before we reach the mine? We'll travel by compass and look to King to get us through. Hey, Sergeant, King's running away. There's no danger of that, Ed. But look, he's running way ahead on the trail. He does that often. The team will catch up to him. He... It looks like he's found something in the snow. Yes. Looks as if it's an animal. All right, King, we're coming, fella. Hurry, Hurry, hurry. Come on, Ed. We'll investigate. I'm with you, Sergeant. What is it, King? It's a man. He's wearing a bearskin parka. He must have frozen to death. Sergeant Preston didn't answer. He had already noticed the official striped breeches on the still form. Gently, he turned over the body that had been lying face down in the snow. Bill. You know him, Sergeant? Yes. He's wearing a uniform. That's right. This is Corporal Buckland. I came to this part of the Yukon to see him. I didn't expect to find him dead. He was shot. He was shot from ambush. His gun is still in the holster. You say you came here to meet him? Yes, the inspector sent me from Dawson to warn Bill about Cub West and his gang of killers. Is the Cub West gang in this part of the country? Yes. Perhaps Bill crossed their trail. Those murderers. They're too late to help Bill, but not too late to get those killers. Ed, help me carry his body to the sled, and we'll look for tracks. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, have you had the thrill lately of being right there in the ballpark when the leadoff man steps up to the plate? Have you been there to see the star players in person? See the wallop home runs? See the exciting double plays? Well, don't miss the fun another day. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. Yes, you can get a free baseball ticket. No mailing, no waiting. It's right inside a package of Quaker Puff wheat or Quaker Puff rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Or buy Quaker Paco 10 and get two free baseball tickets. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry to get your free baseball ticket in the special package of Quaker Puff wheat or rice, Muffet shredded wheat or Quaker Paco 10. Now to continue. Snow began falling as Sergeant Preston and Ed Wright placed the Mounties body on the sled. Inside of 15 minutes, the snow became a howling blizzard, completely covering the tracks of the men who had murdered Corporal Buckley. After the death of her husband, Mary Wright found it increasingly difficult to make ends meet. Men had to be hired and costly machinery bought before gold could be taken from the tunnel. With barely enough food to for herself and Johnny, Mary had no hope of operating the mine. She and Johnny were finishing a light meal in their cabin as the storm raged outside. Oh, gosh, it's nice to be indoors. I hate to be out in the storm. Someone has to go out to feed the dog. I wish you'd do it for me tonight, Johnny. But, Mom... Take some of the dried fish in the woodshed. Right. Oh, son, you're still afraid of dogs. I hoped you'd change. Mom, I've tried to like dogs. Honestly, I... Let's talk it over, Johnny, and see if we can't settle it before Uncle Ed gets here. You wouldn't want him to know you're afraid of dogs, would you? No, but... All right, then. Now, what is it that makes you afraid? You remember the time Dad and I went to Dawson when we lived in Three Pines? What about it, dear? Dad and I were traveling at night. There was a moon, but we couldn't see very far. A wolf pack was back off the trail. They attacked two men. Dad had to keep firing his gun to drive the wolves away. 
those wolves that killed the men, Mom. Yes, Dad told me about it when you came home. In the moonlight, those wolves looked just like dogs. I kill a little thing of those men every time I get near a dog. But there's a big difference between a dog and a wolf. A dog is a friend. Not to me, he isn't. I don't like dogs. Wouldn't you like to overcome your fear? Well, yes, but... Taking food to the dogs is a good way to start. All right, Mom. I'll try. Good for you, Johnny. I'll put the fish in a basket. You just throw it to the dog. Mary Wright stood by the open door of the woodshed, watching Johnny as he walked toward the dog run. With a strong wind at his back, Johnny felt as if he were being driven toward the thing he feared. Please, but just stay there. Lying down in the snow, I'll throw the fish at him. I'm going to have to get close. But the hungry dogs smelled the dried fish. They stood up, anticipating the food they knew was theirs. Oh, Johnny, oh, I'm coming. With each step, Johnny's terror mounted. His heart pounded in his ears. His hands became numb and his knees shook. The dogs crowded toward him eagerly. But Johnny had stopped in his tracks. He trembled from head to foot. The waiting dogs caught the hated scent of fear and reacted instantly. You, darling, you're all right. Kill me. Kill me. Come on in the house, darling. I, I tried, Mom. I tried. There, there, dear. Don't cry. Mom, I, I don't like your heart. I'll never like them. All right, Sonny. I don't care if Uncle Ed knows it. Maybe that's Uncle Ed. Now dry your tears, darling. I'll open the door, Mom. Howdy, son. Hello. Come on in, boys. Right. Cub West pushed Johnny to one side as he and his men entered the large, cheerful kitchen. Anyone besides you and the boy here, Mrs. Wright? No, of course not. How do you know my name? Put your shoulder packs over in the corner, boys. Make yourselves to home. Right. You're welcome here if you're looking for shelter till the storm passes. We're here to stay. Well, maybe for a couple of days, maybe for a couple of weeks. You can't stay here. You heard what Mom said. Get out of here. Hey, yeah, you're a little too flip, boy. Maybe this will teach you a lesson. Leave my boy alone. Next time oh. Cub speaks to you, answer respectful, you hear? Leave him alone, you beast. Let that be a lesson oh. to him. Next time, I'll hit him harder. Please go away and leave us alone. This is right. I'll give you the facts. We're dodging the mountain. Dodging the mountain? Yeah. We need a place to hide. Now, maybe if you know more about us, you'll realize we mean business. That you can't double cross us and stay alive. We're wanted for robbery and murder. What, murder? One of the men we killed was a Mountie. We shot him this morning. We don't want to do any more killing, Mrs. Wright. But we will if we have to. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. Mary, you and Slim search the place for weapons. Right, boss. Come on, Slim. You're right with you. What if someone comes here looking for you? We'll never be taken. We'll fight it out. But do you know if... If anyone is following you? We know Sergeant Preston's on our trail. Sergeant Preston? Yeah, what about it? Oh, well, nothing... I've heard of him. Well, the storm's likely wiped out our tracks, but he may have that dog of his with him. If he comes here, he'll have to get all six of us. Because if he doesn't, we'll get him. Meanwhile, Johnny's uncle had found it nearly impossible to withstand the punishment of the stinging wind and blinding snowstorm. A tenderfoot fresh from the States, Ed Wright wasn't used to the hardships of the Yukon. After struggling to keep pace with Sergeant Preston, he had finally asked the Maori to seek shelter. Preston had snooped snow from a giant drift. Into the icy cavern, he carried the body of Bill Buckland. And then, while King lay at his master's feet and the rest of the team curled up outside, the two men waited for the storm to subside. Sorry, I had to slow you down, Sergeant. That's all right, Ed. Takes an experienced traveler to make his way through Yukon storms. You'll get used to this weather. I never thought I'd find the inside of a snowdrift cozy. When you're caught in open country, a hollowed-out drift makes a fine shelter. Too bad the snow has covered the tracks of the men who murdered your friend. At least we know there were tracks of six men at the scene of the ambush. How far would Cub West and his killers have to travel to get out of the territory? A couple of hundred miles. Oh, if I'd killed a Marty, I couldn't get out of the Yukon fast enough. He might do that. You don't sound convinced. Before I left Dawson, I studied the file of information on Cub West. What'd you find? I found he's escaped capture all these years by doing the unexpected. Well, where are you going? I think the storm's over. I'll go outside and look around. <laughs> How is it? Still snowing. 
But the storm's over. Then we'll be able to go on. Hey, the trail's covered. Where do we go from here? Your brother's cabin's due north of here. Come on, Ben. Let the dogs up, boy. Whoa! I'll call hey. at the cabin, and King and I'll be on our way. It was late afternoon. Cub West and his gang had made themselves at home in Mary Wright's cabin. Johnny was bringing in a supply of wood from the shed behind the house when the man named Farrell said, Cub, come over here to the window. Yeah, what is it, Farrell? Yeah, it looks like someone's coming. Yeah. Two men and a dog team. There's a free lead running ahead of those huskies. I saw him, boys. Hey, boys. One of those men is Sergeant Press. Well, right, sir, let me see. When he walks in, all six of us will have to drop on him. And the boy here will open the door for us. You'll kill him if he comes inside. I won't open the door. Now, be sensible, Johnny. You wouldn't want to stop a bullet, would you? They're coming mighty close, boss. Come here, Johnny. Cub West and the men with him were trying to watch the Mounties progress without getting too close to the windows. Johnny left his mother's side and started toward Cub West. But as the boy passed the door leading to the woodshed, he rushed toward him. Hey, what the... Johnny snatched the door open and slammed it quickly as he rushed from the house to the outside. He kept close to the house so the outlaws couldn't see him. And as he ran, he shouted... Help! Help! Cub West, Help! Preston heard the warning. He swung his team to the protection of large boulders that had been placed to form a fence and windbreak around the cabin. The bounty ducked low and shouted to Ed Wright. Ed, hit the ground. But Ed Wright was too slow. The outlaws opened fire from the windows of the cabin. Just then, Johnny, coming from the opposite direction, reached the shelter of the huge boulders. He hurried to Sergeant Preston's side. Thanks for the warning, son. They're inside the house, Sergeant Preston. Come west in his whole day. We, we nearly walked into a trap. Ed, are you all right? They hit me. I'll look the warning. They're still shooting. Don't worry, they can't hit us as long as we stay behind these boulders. But they might get out of the house without us seeing them. King will warn us if they try that. <laughs> How bad is the wound, Sergeant? It's a flesh wound there, and I'll do what I can for it. As for you, young fellow, I have a spare pluck and mittens on my sled. You'd better put them on. Yes, sir. See, a couple of stars are too big for you, but they still be warm. Here, son. Thanks a lot. Are you Johnny Wright? Yeah, but how did you know? Your uncle told me about you. My uncle? I'm your uncle, Johnny. Oh, golly. Mom and I knew you were coming, but we didn't know you'd be coming with Sergeant Preston. Oh, gosh. Mom's still inside with those twins. The dirty killer. Steady, Ed. I have some bandage here. I'll put a dressing on that wound. Oh, Sergeant Preston, you just got to get those outlaws. They told Mom and me they already killed one mommy, and they want to kill you, too. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. You should have been at the ball game today. I saw three home runs. And guess what? I got one of the home run balls. Fellas and girls, why don't you get a free baseball ticket? It's easy. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Your free ticket is waiting for you right now inside packages of Quaker Puff Wheat, Quaker Puff Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, and Quaker Paco 10, which has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see wonderful major or minor league baseball games free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get as many free tickets as you want. No mailing, no waiting. When mom buys breakfast cereal, just be sure she gets the kind with a free baseball ticket inside. That's Quaker Pop Wheat and Rice and Muffet Shredded Wheat. You get two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. So don't miss out another day. See the star players wallop those home runs. Now to continue. Inside the right cabin, Cub West raged at the turn of events that had upset his plan. The Mountie's safe behind those boulders out there. Yeah, but we have not trapped, Cub. And he has us trapped. Not only that, but he could go in a straight line from the boulders to the main trail, and we wouldn't be able to see him. The boulders cut off the view of the trail. But the cinch Preston won't show himself. Of course he won't. Well, what do we do, boys? We'll wait till it's dark. I have a plan, boys. And I guarantee we'll get that Mountie. Meanwhile, behind the boulders at the side of the cabin, Sergeant Preston had made Ed Wright as comfortable as possible. How do you feel, Ed? I'll be all right, Sergeant. Don't worry about me. Sergeant Preston, Mom's inside the cabin. 
Those crooks might kill him. Well, try to get Cub West and his gang before they hurt your mother, darling. Well, how will you do that? Well, you'll have to go to town and get help. That's our only chance, Jenny. Well, I'll run all the way to town. Well, that isn't necessary. You'll ride my sled. Well, but I can't handle a dog team. King will handle the dog. You tell King where to go. He'll do the rest. Oh, oh, I, mean, I can't do it. I'll go on foot, Sergeant Preston. The snow's too deep, Johnny. You couldn't break trail through it. We have to close in on that gang before dark. That's right, Johnny. It'll be dark in about three hours. After it's dark, those crooks might be able to escape. I can use a gun. I just stay here and Uncle Ed can go. He's been wounded, Johnny. He can't travel. Couldn't King go alone? I've heard that he's gone for help before. Only when he knew where to go. He's never been in this part of the country. He doesn't know anyone in town. Johnny, what's wrong? Sergeant Preston, I, I'm afraid of John. I try not to be, but I can't help it. Please let me try to go to town on foot. Here, King. <laughs> Johnny, this is King. King knew from Sergeant Preston's manner that Johnny was a friend. But as he stood close to his master, the great dog sensed Johnny's fear. <laughs> King wanted to be friends with the boy, and he tried to tell him so. <laughs> King... This is Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Now, don't be frightened, Johnny. He's just saying hello. He's coming close to me. He won't hurt you. The great dog moved close to the boy and nuzzled the small hand encased in the large mitten. He, he acts as if he wants to be friends. Well, why don't you pet him? Will he let me do that? Try it and see. <laughs> Golly, he, he seems to like that. He must like you, Johnny. He won't let many people do that. Gosh, Sergeant Preston, I think he does like me. Now, do you think King is as dangerous to you as those cooks inside the house? Oh, no. You're not afraid of King, Johnny. And you're not afraid of any other dog. Not when your mother's life is at stake. Oh, you're right, Sergeant Preston. I'll go to town. Good for you, Johnny. I'll help you climb on the sled. Oh, all set? Yes. Here, King. Johnny, you and King are partners. This dog will lay down his life to help you. He's your friend. He's going to help you save your mother. I'm not afraid. Fine, son. Now you give King the orders. Tell him where to go. I remember how my dad used to drive our team. I'll be able to do it. Try to bring help before dark. And Johnny, keep these boulders between you and the house so the outlaws won't see you. I will. I'm King! <laughs> An hour passed, and then another. From time to time, a gun barked as one of the outlaws tried to leave the cabin. Then the gathering darkness made it difficult for Sergeant Preston to watch the house. In the kitchen, Cub West pulled one of Mary Wright's skirts over his own clothing and placed a shawl over his head. Harold, we go out the front door. With me dressed in this skirt and shawl, the Molly will hold his fire, because he'll think I'm Mrs. Wright. That's a slick idea, Cub. I'll have my gun beneath the shawl. As soon as I get close to Preston, I'll open fire. When the rest of you hear the gun play, rush it. Right, 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 right. Now open the door, Farrell. Call out to the mountain. Right. Preston, hold your fire. I'm bringing Mrs. Wright out with me. All right. Give your hands up and walk slowly. Let's go, boy. Light from the open door silhouetted the two figures leaving the cabin. When Ed Wright saw the short, heavy set figure in the woman's skirt, he called out. Sergeant Preston, it's a trick. Farrell, hold him fire! Cub West and Farrell dropped to the ground. Hearing the gunplay, the rest of the gang rushed from the house, firing as they came. We'll arrest them. Come on, boys! Boss, listen. Someone's coming. The person must have sent for help. More than a dozen townsmen joined Sergeant Preston. In the battle that followed, Cub West and his gang of killers were completely outnumbered. Those who hadn't been wounded realized the hopelessness of continuing the fight. I quit. I give up. Don't shoot. I've had enough. Make sure I'm hit and dying. What about the rest of your gang? My left arm's busted, Preston. But as long as I can use the other one, I'll get you. No. Oh. Oh, both of your arms are broken, Cub. Any of the rest of you want gunplay? Oh. Looks like Cub West and his gang are through, Sergeant Preston. Thanks to Johnny and King. Is his mom all right? There's your answer, Johnny. She's coming from the house right now. Johnny! Johnny! Where's my ball? Oh, right here, Mom. I'm all right. Oh, thank heaven. Mom, look who's here. Hello, Mary. Ed, when did you get here? He was with Sergeant Preston all the time. Sergeant Preston, I've disarmed these killers. Now what are you going to do with them? 
We'll take them into the house, bandage their wounds, handcuff them, and take them to town. They'll go on trial for robbery and murder. Sergeant Press, Cobweb told Johnny and me that they'd killed a monster. Dad and I found Corporal Buckland's body on the trail this morning. We should have killed you too, Preston, when we had the chance. Come on, you get along. Into the house with you. Get moving now. Johnny, you saved our lives when you brought help from town. Oh, gosh, Sergeant Preston, I didn't do anything. King did all the work. Did you say Johnny brought help? Oh, that's right, Mom. I drove Sergeant Preston's dog to town. You mean you handled a dog, too? I sure did. Oh, Johnny, I'm so proud of you. You have reason to be proud, Mrs. Wright. Real courage is needed to do a thing you're afraid to do. I'll never be afraid of another dog. Why, they're just my good friends. You've earned a fine reward for yourself, Johnny. Reward? For what? For the capture of Cub West and his gang. You'll get about $3,000. $3,000? Oh, golly, Mom. That's enough to start operating the mine. Sergeant Press and the boys from town have those killers lined up and ready for handcuffs. That's our job, isn't it, King? <laughs> yes, fella, it'll be a real pleasure to jail Buckland's murderers. Then we'll report to the inspector that this case is closed. We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Your musical treat of the day waits for you throughout the week on Mutual. Each Tuesday and Thursday evening, it's time for Eddie Fisher and a session of music as everyone likes it. Young and old delight in Eddie Fisher's way with a song. And he's joined on every show by Fred Robbins as MC, Alex Stordahl's orchestra, and outstanding guest stars. Every Saturday, the teenager's favorite, Johnny Desmond, brings phonorama time and a roundup of the newest and best in popular recordings. On Sundays, the Enchanted Hour presents favorite music from the world's best-loved composers. Every weekday also means time for Hawaii calls and authentic melodies of the islands. Music fills Mutual's air throughout the week. Hear the Eddie Fisher Show, Johnny Desmond with Phonorama Time, Enchanted Hour, and Hawaii Calls on Mutual throughout the week over most of these stations. Sergeant Preston alone must face a tribe of hostile Indians. And worse than the Indians, the renegades who have incited their uprising. For these ruthless men are gambling for a million dollars in gold and their greed may drive them on to murder. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. The delicious cereals shot from guns. <laughs> By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. America.